Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the factory method pattern and how to use it in Ruby. My name is Caesar, and I've been using Ruby since 2008 to build all sorts of web applications, ranging from small MVC-like apps to full-blown multi-million dollar ones. In the beginning, I used to hate it because every time I changed something in my code, something else unexpected would break. And every time I wanted to add a new feature, I would have to change a lot of code, and guess what? Something else would break. So I got really frustrated about this, and I started to look into how to solve both of these problems. And I eventually discovered that the solution to problem number one, i.e. to not break stuff when you change code, is to test it really well using strong automated testing principles. But that is not as easy as it may sound. It took me years to fully master this process. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to do that and not spend years discovering it by yourself through trial and error, check out my book, Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description below. Now, going back to problem number two, i.e. extending your application without changing too much code, is to design it really well. And that's where today's pattern comes in. What the factory method pattern allows you to do is to isolate conditional instantiations in one method. And when you need to change that logic, you only have to change one method not the entire code base. But to illustrate this, let's look at some example code. So in this example, you can see we have some params there that you might get from a user submitted form. And the params hash includes a user type. Now, if the user type is admin, then we want to create an admin object. But if the user type is member, we want to instantiate a member object. Otherwise, if the user type is none of those two options, then we will create a guest object. So what is the problem with this code? By looking at it in isolation, the problem is not obvious. But let's look at a different example. Let's imagine we have the same code block used twice inside this class. So we have two routes, namely home and contact. And they both take a user type in the params and based on it, they create a user object. To determine the kind of user they are working with, they both need to go through the same process. But this logic could be used in multiple places throughout the application. So when the time comes to add a new type of user to your application, you'll have to go through each one of these code blocks and add the new type to all of them. Hopefully, you don't forget to update one of them. So that's one problem, but there is one more. Once you create a user object, you need to make sure that all the user objects behave the same way, because you will use them in the same way. Namely, you will call the same methods on the resulting object no matter what class it was created from. And one way to make sure that all these objects behave the same way, i.e. they respond to the same methods, is to create an abstract class from which all of these user classes inherit from. Here's how that looks like. The user base class doesn't do that much in terms of behavior. But what it does do is to force all of its subclasses to override its methods. So if your endpoint is using those methods, they need to be available across all objects. Otherwise, you'll get an exception. OK, so let's go back to the factory method pattern. What the factory method pattern does is it helps you with scenarios like these where you have some logic for creating different objects of the same class. It does it by encapsulating that logic in a method. So let's create a new class and move that conditional in there. By doing that, we've isolated the creation of the user object into a different class that we can now reuse across our entire code base. And when the time comes to add a new user type to our application, we only need to change that one method. Everything else stays the same. And because the change is so small, it's a lot harder to introduce new bugs in your application. So there you have it. That's the factory method pattern in Ruby. I really hope that helped, and if you'd like to learn more about Ruby, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting a lot more videos just like this one. Bye!